From the pen of Inzolicus, 2nd century sage, 3rd era, 125. The exact date of the Empress Kintira Septim II's execution in the tower at Glenpoint Castle is open to some speculation. Some believe she was slain shortly after her imprisonment in the 121st year, while others maintain that she was likely kept alive as a hostage until shortly before her uncle Sepphoris, King of Galane, reconquered Western High Rock in the summer of the 125th year. The certainty of Kintira's demise rallied many against the Wolf Queen Potema and her son, who had been crowned Emperor Uriel Septim III four years previously when he invaded the underguarded Imperial City. Sepphoris concentrated his army on the Warren High Rock, while his brother Magnus, King of Lilmoth, brought his Argonian troops through loyal Morrowind and into Skyrim to fight in Potema's home province. The reptilian troops fought well in the summer months, but during the winter, they retired south to regroup and attack again when the weather was warm. At this stalemate, the war lasted out two more years. Also in the 125th year, Magnus's wife Helena gave birth to their first child, a boy who they named Pelagius, after the emperor who fathered Magnus, Sepphoris, the late emperor Antiochus, and the dread wolf queen of solitude. Third Era, 127. Potema sat on soft silk cushions in the warm grass in front of her tent and watched the sun rise over the dark woods on the other side of the meadow. It was a peculiarly vibrant morning, typical of Skyrim's summertide. The high chirrup of insects buzzed all around her, and the sky surged with thousands of following birds rolling over one another and forming a multitude of patterns. Nature was unaware of the war coming to Falconstar, she surmised. Your Highness, a message from the army in Hammerfell, said one of her maids, bringing in a courier. He was breathing hard, stained with sweat and mud, evidence of a long, fast ride over many, many miles. My queen, said the courier, looking to the ground, I bring grave news of your son, the emperor. He met your brother, King Sepphoris's army in Hammerfell in the countryside of Ikadag, and there did battle. You would be proud, for he fought well, but in the end, the imperial army was defeated and your son, our emperor, was captured. King Sepphoris is bringing him to Galane. Potema listened to the news, scowling. That clumsy fool, she said at last. Potema stood up and strolled into camp where the men were arming themselves, preparing for battle. Long ago, the soldiers understood that their lady did not stand on ceremony, and she would prefer that they work rather than salute her. Lord Vokin was ahead of her, already meeting with the commander of the battle mages, discussing last-minute strategy. "'My queen,' said the courier who had been following her, "'what are you going to do?' "'I'm going to win this battle with Magnus, "'despite his superior position holding the ruins of Cogmanthus Castle,' said Potema. "'And then, when I know what Sepphoris means to do with the Emperor, "'I'll respond accordingly.' If there's a ransom to be paid, I'll pay it. If there's a prison exchange needed, so be it. Now please, bathe yourself and rest and try not to get in the way of the war. It's not an ideal scenario, 
said Lord Vokin when Potema had entered the commander's tent. If we attack the castle from the west, we'll be running directly into the fire from their mages and archers. If we come from the east, We'll be going through swamps, and the Argonians do better in that type of environment than we do. A lot better. What about the north and the south? Just hills, correct? Very steep hills, your highness, said the commander. We should post bowmen there, but we'll be too vulnerable putting out the majority of our force. So it's the swamp, said Potema, and added pragmatically, unless we withdraw and wait for them to come out before fighting. If we wait, Sephiroth will have his army here from High Rock and will be trapped between the two of them, said Lord Vokin. Not a preferable situation. I'll talk to the troops, said the commander. Try to prepare them for the swamp attack. No, said Potema. I'll speak to them. In full battle gear, the soldiers gathered in the center of camp. They were a motley collection of men and women, Cyrodiil's, Nords, Bretons, and Dunmer, young bloods and old veterans, the sons and daughters of nobles, shopkeepers, serfs, priests, prostitutes, farmers, academics, adventurers, all of them under the banner of the Red Diamond, the symbol of the imperial family of Tamriel. My children, Potema said, her voice ringing out, hanging in the still morning mist. We have fought in many battles together, over mountaintops and beachheads, through forests and deserts. I have seen great acts of valor from each one of you, which does my heart proud. I have also seen dirty fighting, backstabbing, cruel and wanton feats of savagery, which pleases me equally as well. For you are all warriors. Warming to her theme, Potema walked the line from soldier to soldier, looking each one in the eye. War is in your blood, in your brain, in your muscles. In everything you think and everything you do. When this war is over, when the forces are vanquished that seek to deny the throne to the true Emperor Uriel Septim III, you may cease to be warriors. You may choose to return to your lives before the war, to your farms and your cities. Show off your scars and tell tales of the deeds you did this day to your wandering neighbors. But on this day, make no mistake, you are warriors. You are war. She could see her words were working. All around her bloodshot eyes were focusing on the slaughter to come, arms tensing around weapons. She continued in her loudest cry, and you will move through the swamplands like an unstoppable power from the blackest part of oblivion, and you will rip the scales from the reptilian things in Cogmanthist Castle. You are warriors, and you need not only fight, you must win. You must win. The soldiers roared in response, shocking the birds from the trees all around the camp. From a vantage point on the hills to the south, Potema and Lord Vokin had excellent views of the battle as it raged. It looked like two swarms of two colors of insects moving back and forth over a clump of dirt which was the castle ruins. Occasionally, a burst of flame or a cloud of acid from one of the mages would flicker over the battle arresting their attention. But hour after hour, the fighting seemed like nothing but chaos. A rider approaches, said Lord Vokin, breaking the silence. 
The young Redguard woman was wearing the crest of Galane but carried a white flag. Potema allowed her to approach. Like the courier from the morning, the rider was well travel-worn. Your Highness, she said out of breath. I have been sent from your brother, my lord, King Sepphoris, to bring you dire news. Your son, Uriel, was captured in Ikadag on the field in battle, and from there transported to Galane. I know all this, said Potema scornfully. I have couriers of my own. You can tell your master that after I've won this battle, I'll pay whatever ransom or exchange your highness... An angry crowd met the caravan your son was in before it made it to Galane, the rider said quickly. Your son is dead. He had been burned to death within his carriage. He is dead. Potema turned from the young woman and looked down at the battle. Her soldiers were going to win. Magnus's army was in retreat. One other item of news, your highness, said the rider. King Sepphoris is being proclaimed emperor. Potema did not look at the woman. Her army was celebrating their victory. <laughs>